Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax. And while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. What's the matter with you two? Why, nothing's the matter with us two, Mama. Mm, stop pretending. You can't fool your old mother. I know my chicks. Is uh, anything the matter with you, chick? No, nothing's the matter with me, chick. You fool all you like, even fool each other. But you can't, can't fool me. Oh, she's such a smarty, isn't she, David? Mm, like a wise old owl. Mm-hmm. Peering at us over the rim of her glasses. It wouldn't be Mama without the rim of her glasses, would it? Or her knitting needles. <laughs> oh, what time is it, David? Oh, don't do that. It's nine o'clock. Oh, darn. Still too early to go to bed. <sighs> Honestly, it takes such a long time getting late sometimes. Yeah, well, if you'd stop mooning, we'd get late earlier. David, she making sense? Mm-hmm. World of. I am not mooning, Mom. I call walking around the room, looking like a lost sheep, hanging out of a window like a weeping willow, sighing like a sick balloon, <laughs> mooning. Your definition might be different. But I can't help that. David, you feel like a sick balloon? Now, don't deflate Mama. Oh, sorry, Mama. If she has a feeling, let her have it. I'm reading my book, and there's nothing despondent about a man reading a book. Hmm? Your pipe's not lit. So? There's something very despondent about a man whose pipe isn't lit and doesn't even know it. Mrs. Sherlock Holmes. I even know what you're despondent about, secretive as you may be. Oh, tell us, Mama. Tell us, Mama. It's that ridiculous piece of land across the road. And what's ridiculous about it? You. David, she's calling us names. Mm, go on, Mama. Just because that piece of land was sold to somebody else, you two have been behaving like you lost your best friends. Oh, it's sheer nonsense. You ought to be happy and grateful. Well, that's a terrible thing to advise people who've lost their best friend, Mrs. Brown. Why, you couldn't afford that piece of land? No, you're telling I. We couldn't afford it any more than a trip to the moon. <laughs> About all we can afford is a toothpick. Still, we were going to buy it, weren't we? Then you ought to be dancing in the streets. You've been saved by an unknown friend. Whoever it was that bought that piece of land ahead of you deserves your everlasting gratitude. We wanted to buy it. Precisely. And you would have had to, too, if you hadn't been left behind. What's so terrible about buying it, even if you can't afford it? Oh, I'm all in favor of you wanting to buy it. But I still think you're very lucky. And deep down inside... You know you're lucky, too. I don't think so at all. We're not any richer for it. Of course you are. Of course we are not. Look, Mama, we were going to buy that land with money that wasn't ours. That's right. Well, then we'd be richer by the land. So? No, we haven't got the land, we haven't got the money that isn't ours. So we're a lot poorer than we would have been if we bought it. Would you say that again? It's perfectly simple. We could have saved a lot of money buying that land. Did, uh... Did you teach her mathematics, Mrs. Brown? No. I think Einstein taught her. Now maybe he'd like to take a few lessons from her himself. Yes, I'll write to him in the morning. I don't mind. Right. I'd be glad to. What time is it now? It is still early. I wouldn't mind going to bed early if there's nothing else to do. Do you? Mm-hmm. I do. Oh. Just look at it. Claudia, you're getting that window pane all cloudy. Standing with your nose against it like that. Look at it, Mama. Mm -hmm. Acres and acres and acres, and the moon shining on it. Look at that scraggly tree. Perfect tree for a swing, you know. Oh, you have a perfect tree for a swing. Well, Tucker here. Oh, for heaven's sake, I wonder what he wants at this hour. Come on in, Mr. Tucker. I'm already in, son. Hope, uh... Hope I ain't disturbing anything. No, no. It'll be a pleasant relief to see a cheerful face, Mr. Tucker. Oh, there ain't anything cheerful about my face, Mrs. Brown. Nothing cheerful at all, at all, at all. Oh, I think you've a very cheerful face, Mr. Tucker. Not tonight, ma'am. Tonight my face looks like a green apple pie that's been mashed in. Oh, I'm that sad. Well, yeah? what are you so sad about, Mr. Oh, Tucker? Oh, man, of my disposition, Mrs. Norton is always sad when he has his nose onto the ground and ain't sniffed up a scent. 
Say, I ain't interrupting nothing, am no, I? No, no, we're just talking. Well, you have that kind of a look about you, like folks who's in the middle of something. Nope, we're in the middle of nothing. What uh, scent was your nose trying to pick up, Mr. Tucker? I ain't seen nothing like it, son. I've been going around all day questioning, asking, snooping, eavesdropping, and it's still a deep, dark secret. What's still a deep, dark secret? Who has purchased the land across the road? Nobody seems to know. Well, Mr. Hankins seemed to know yesterday. That's the first time that old Mr. Hankins, he, he don't deserve such a respectful title. It's the first time he's held a secret in nigh over 30 years. And all I can say is, it's scurrilous of him. That's what it is, it's scurrilous. Well, all good lawyers keep secrets, Mr. Tucker, well, scurrilous or not. he a good lawyer until now, and this is sure a bad time for him to start. Dang him. Well, I, I don't know why whoever bought that land wants it to be a secret anyway. Whoever bought that land probably doesn't want you to throw knives in his back. That's why he's kept it a secret. I'll bet. I've asked everybody. The editor of the paper, he, he don't know nothing. The councilman, he don't know nothing. Matthew Warren, he don't know nothing. George Reynolds, he don't know nothing. Nobody knows nothing. Well, how do you expect anyone to know anything when you don't know anything, Mr. Tucker? Hey, I, I, say... I know everything, dang it. You speak the truth when you say I know everything. Yes. And if, if there would be anybody to know, it would be Jared Tucker. Well, personally, I suggest we drop the whole matter and forget it. Sick and tired of talking about that piece of property across the road. I don't know, and I don't care who bought it. You don't, eh, son? No, I don't want to discuss it any further. Oh. It's bought, and that's that. After all, what's so important about it? So somebody bought and bought the land who might not raise cows or farm his land. So what? Who cares? So he built a Spanish-style stucco house with a swimming pool and eight sunken gardens. So yeah. what? So I'll tell you what. You'll sit here eating your heart out. So you sit here kicking yourself because you're not a millionaire? So you sit here watching our land contaminated with city folks who haven't got the sense to live decently? So that's what. Mr. Tucker, please stop. Oh, I ain't beefing at you. You two youngs is all the hope I got for the world. So I ain't beefing at you. I'm beefing at myself. To have the sense, to not have the sense 40 years ago to buy up this here land. Oh, what's the use? Delilah says I got a tongue like a snake, you know. Maybe she's right. I love snakes. So too, Mama. I think snakes are adorable. Yes, well, adorable. <clears throat> just thought I'd let you folks know that. Well, uh, that there ain't nothing to let you know. Yeah, well, thanks a lot. Say, is that a car pulling up outside? I didn't hear it. Well, you wear your hair flat over your ears, Mama. I heard it. Look, it is. It is a car. Is it? Mm, yeah, probably somebody lost. It is not somebody lost. It's somebody who knows just where he's coming. Well, I'm going upstairs. You stay here, Mama. If it's a friend of yours, I look a mess. I'm going upstairs. If it's a friend of ours, it doesn't matter if you look a mess. Besides, you don't. No more than usual. Thank you. Who is it, darling? We'll see. Why, come in, Roger. I thought I'd find you all in bed. David said it's too early, is it that man again? It is he, David. Hello, oh. Mrs. Brown. Hello. Tucker, the top of the night to you. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. Evening, Mr. Killian. Evening, Mr. Tucker. Well, what brings you up here, Roger? Left you at the office at 5.30. I didn't expect to see you so soon. I am a very unpredictable man, I am. Oh, I you never are. thought of you as being unpredictable, especially. That just proves how unpredictable I am. Well, I guess you are at that. <laughs> well, I'm leaving. Well, why so all of a sudden, Mr. Tucker? Oh, it's getting crowded here. Besides, I... I ain't got no more to say. You might no. have. You might think of something. Oh, don't go. It's not crowded here. I suspect that Mr. Tucker likes to be the star attraction. Oh, I don't like to be, Mr. Killian. I just naturally be. <laughs> Roger, why are you walking up and down like that? Oh, down. was I walking up and down? Spending the night, of course. Why not? I as good as invited myself, didn't I? No. no. What, are you, what are you doing up in these parts, anyway? Hasn't a man a right to come and go as he chooses? No. And since when? David, do you think you own Connecticut? No. I don't even own as much of it as I'd like to. Yep, I'm leaving. I says I was gone. I'm a man of my word. If there's anything I hate, it's a man who stands around on one foot. And since I still got both of mine, heaven be blessed, I, I'm leaving. I feel very badly, Mr. Tucker, driving you out into the night looking so despondent. Oh, there ain't nothing despondent about me. It's these young'uns here who'll be despondent, Mr. Killian. Really? Well, Mr. Tucker, his ideas were in mourning because the land across the road has been sold. Well, you ain't mourning exactly, but you ain't kicking your heels together like a couple frogs. <laughs> well, neither are you. No. And that is too bad. Something I've always wanted to see was Mr. Tucker kicking his feet together uh, like a frog. Oh, really, Roger? 
Say, how'd you happen to come up this evening? Didn't tell David a word about it, hmm? Impulse? Oh. I just felt like driving up here, and, well, a man likes to walk around his grounds once in a while. You really do have a nice proprietary sense about our farm, Roger. I'm glad. Well, after all, I did introduce you to the place, didn't I? (laughs) You sure did. Without you, we'd still be poor, deluded city folks. So would I. Now you've returned me the favor, David. Why? Without you, I'd probably still be poor, deluded city folks myself. You know what I can't understand, Roger, is if you, you, you like coming up here so much as you say you do, well, then why don't you come more often? A man can take advantage of his friends just so long. And after that, he's... Well, after that, he should leave them alone and uh, build his own home. What would you do with a house? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Where do you think it should be, David? Now, on the hill or right near the road? Uh, That is, my house. After all, with 50 acres to choose from, hmm, you all look like guppies. Yes, dear people, it is my land. My 50 acres of land across the road. Oh, you, you bought it. I most certainly did. Well, I'll be gold dang you. We, we ought to torn feather you. We ought... What was uh, that? Uh, well, you ought to torn feather you. <laughs> you mean Dang it you all. bought it to build on it a Spanish stucco house with swimming pools and... and so so you're gardens? going to turn that land into skyscrapers and factories yes. and things like Josh that? says we ought to torn feather him. We ought to. <laughs> I won't have it. <laughs> well, I am speechless. But in the meantime, Roger... Welcome home. Well, I... It feels like home already. Now, Mr. Killian, before you waste any more time, you're going to plant that land or keep cows? Well, I don't know exactly. What would you suggest? Oh, you haven't exactly decided, hey? No. Hmm. Well, you better start deciding, because as them Chinese say, it's later than you think. <laughs> <laughs> This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. The dictionary defines hospitable as receiving and entertaining strangers or guests generously and kindly. Uh, That generosity need not include costly foods, so long as it does include a gracious, welcoming smile. The pause that refreshes with ice-cold Coca-Cola induces such smiles. It says without need for words, how nice to have you here. Make yourself at home. Where there's Coke, there's pleasant hospitality for young and old. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere.